How many wars can planet Earth survive? War has been part of life for pretty much as long as life has been around. For some reason, humans and fighting seems to go hand in hand. In fact, I bet you would be pretty hard pressed to find any year in the last like 2000 where there wasn't at least some tiny war skirmish going on in some part of the world. Wars are obviously pretty horrible and extremely damaging to human life. It's currently estimated that war, throughout all of human history, has claimed the lives of anywhere from 150 million to a billion people. That is a lot of people who have died for what most of the time works out to be something really stupid. So there's no denying that war is clearly pretty bad for humans as a whole. It's also really bad for the planet as well though. Climate change and greenhouse gas emissions have been something that the planet Earth is struggling with for the last few decades. We are only beginning to understand how truly detrimental climate change is to our future and the future of the planet. We're also only just scratching the surface of what needs to be done in regards to changing things so that our world going up in flames doesn't become an actual reality. War, as you can probably imagine, is not the best thing for the environment or the planet. In fact, war is right up there as being one of the most costly things for our environment. So with that being considered, how many wars can planet Earth actually take? Well, the truth behind it is that the actual conflict in war is just one element to how much it can damage the planet. There are also other aspects of this question that we need to consider as well. Conflict and Environment Observatory says, The environmental impact of wars begins long before they do. Building and sustaining military forces consumes vast quantities of resources. These might be common metals or rare earth elements, water or hydrocarbons. Maintaining military readiness means training and training consumes resources. Military vehicles, aircraft, vessels, Buildings and infrastructure all require energy and more often than not that energy is oil and energy efficiency is low. The CO2 emissions of the largest militaries are greater than many of the world's countries combined. So with that being considered, it's not just the conflict itself but it's the preparation to the conflict that causes serious damaging effects. There is a war going on right now in Europe. But before the first soldier ever even went in, over 100,000 soldiers were amassed and grouped to prepare for the attack. This was along with the mobilization of tanks and army vehicles. Think about that operation alone and how much it would have affected the environment. That's before any fighting even happens at all. So just the threat of war or the preparation for it is something that the world might not be able to handle that much more of. Moving over to the actual conflict though, how much can the world handle of that? Well, it really depends honestly. Conflict and Environment Observatory says, the environmental impacts of conflicts themselves vary greatly. Some international armed conflicts may be brief but highly destructive. Some civil wars may last for decades but be fought at low intensity. Many contemporary conflicts have blurred the lines lasting years but with sustained periods of high intensity warfare. Who is fighting, where they're fighting, and how they're fighting all strongly influence the environmental impact of a conflict. High intensity conflicts require and consume vast quantities of fuel leading to massive CO2 emissions and contributing to climate change. Large scale vehicle movements can lead to widespread physical damage to sensitive landscapes and geodiversity as can the intensive use of explosive ordnance. The use of explosive weapons in urban areas creates vast quantities of debris and rubble which can cause air and soil pollution. Pollution can also be caused by damage to light industry and environmentally sensitive infrastructure such as water treatment plants. The loss of energy supplies can have reverberating effects that are detrimental to the environment, shutting down treatment plants or pumping systems, or can lead to the use of more polluting fuels or domestic generators. Now they go on to write a bunch of stuff about other elements of warfare that we rarely even think about. Pollution elements such as gas leaks or energy plants getting blown up happens all the time. 
these incidents can't really be predicted and are super devastating to the environment when they do happen. Deforestation is a huge thing that goes on during war as well, where we see large forested areas just completely flattened by tanks and bombs. This is a true killer of the environment and something that sets the world back a ton as far as climate change goes. And also, let's think about human displacement. When there's a war going on, humans need to up and get out of there. Think about how many people are being forced to flee from their own country right now. That causes an environmental ripple effect that is ultimately super damaging. Basically, war is very costly on the environment and the earth. But here is what makes answering this question effectively impossible. We don't know how these wars will play out. Let's say that the people of Tuvalu, a very tiny island nation out in the Pacific, have a civil war. That is still a war and lives will still be lost, but the scale of the fight would be so tiny that the environmental impact would largely go unnoticed. If those are the wars that we're talking about, then the world can survive tons of those, thousands of tiny skirmishes like that. Scaling it up though, if we're talking about World War III scenarios where the United States and NATO is pitted against China and Russia and nukes get launched, well then it's possible that the Earth wouldn't be able to survive any wars because that war would completely kill it. There have been recent studies that suggest 100 warheads is kind of the imaginary line where if we pass it then the world will be devastated beyond repair. In fact, it's believed that firing off 100 nukes would be so detrimental to society that whichever country fired them, they would actually feel the consequences in their own country as well, let alone which part of the world actually just got blown off the planet. So if World War III saw that many nukes fly, then it's night night for the planet. The moral of this video is that war is very bad for the environment in all of its capacities. The larger it is, the more damaging it becomes. The current war is doing some serious damage to the environment and it's not even close to being over yet. I have no idea how many more wars of that size we'd be able to handle because we haven't been able to see the full scope of damage that it will cause. But either way, the answer probably isn't a lot. Wars aside, our practices in society have us at a turning point right now in regards to the environment. So basically, engaging in a bunch more wars that don't need to happen really isn't the best thing for the planet. But please let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comments down below. How many wars with how they're currently being fought do you think the world could actually take? I'm very interested to see the number that you come up with and your reasoning behind it. Also, please hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. I've been your host, Nicholas Playlog, and I will catch you next time.